Got another big hand. <laughs> Amen. Please be seated. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor you're looking good. Better than yesterday. And tomorrow. You will, you will shine in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Meta, meta. Meta, meta. Shiny, shiny. shiny, shiny. Sparkle, sparkle. sparkle, sparkle. Wear shades. <laughs> Christ is risen. Amen. Christ is risen. Amen. Christ is risen. Amen. Christ is risen. Amen. Now give him a big hand and tell him thank you. Amen. It's, it's a blessing to be in God's house today. I want to take time to especially uh, thank God for the, the worship team that has led us. Um, come on, let's give God a big hand. <clears throat> on Good Friday uh, service in the evening, uh, they were very involved and we really want to thank God for them. And for them to be able to be ready for today, we really want to thank God for those who were in the team, just making sure that everything went well. We want to appreciate you, our control room and the entire team, Pastor Riggs. Uh, we just want to celebrate you guys. One more time, let's give them a big hand. <laughs> Amen. And sometimes you don't know what it takes uh, for the worship team to stand here. These people practice a lot. Uh, and for them to be able to come and lead us in worship, uh, it's a blessing. And we say thanks to God. Amen. I would like to introduce a team. Uh, these are friends of ours. One of the things we have enjoyed is being hosted uh, in Uganda, all the way in Ankole, a place called Mbarara. And we have built a relationship uh, with a church on that side, and we really want to thank God uh, that some of them are in our meeting today on their way to Israel. They are traveling to Israel tomorrow, uh, but they travel to be with us in the service, and we really want to say thanks, especially uh, to Mama Singuzi, uh, who is here. Please stand. Uh, Mom is a blessing to us, and we thank God for her. <laughs> Amen. And uh, she has one thing in her spirit that uh, anybody who, who gets an opportunity to go to Israel must go to Israel. So look at your neighbor, ask your neighbor, have you been to Israel? Uh, some of them, are, they just they have been as far as Kino. Now we want you to go beyond Kino. Hello. There's a place called Israel. And there's this team that's going to Israel. I'd like to just introduce them. We want to also pray for them. Uh, as they prepare, um, I don't know if uh, the prince is here. Has he come yet? He hasn't arrived. So within the team is the prince of Ankole. Hallelujah. And he's called, um, the, the Uganda names that are sometimes difficult to say, <laughs> but we'll try our best. Uh, he's called, uh, do you say, ba, Barije? Barige, Prince Barije Charles. And he's part of the team that is going. We have Bishop uh, Patrick Kwefuga. Is he here? Bishop, God bless you so much. <laughs> Amen. We have Reverend Charles Buazirayo in our midst. God bless you. We have Frank Mugisha Kashaka. He's on the way. We have Andrew Rocky Shaija. Amen. God bless you. We have David. Uh, that name, yes, it is there, but David, God bless you. <laughs> Amen. We have Ellis, Ellisam. God bless you, madam. Amen. I didn't say the other name. It's a long one. 
We have Jolly Matsiko. God bless you. Amen. Alice Kangume, she's here. Okay, that's the same. All right, so we have Hope. God bless you so much. Amen. We have Maclean. Maclean is here. God bless you. We have Edith Rakundo. On her way, we have Sheba. God bless you. Amen. We have Margaret Namara. Margaret. Okay. Amen. Then we have Fiona. Is Fiona in our midst? Ah, okay, she's coming. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor there are people going to Israel. <laughs> Amen. They travel to Israel, will be back on the 28th. Um, and again, they will be traveling back here to Nairobi before they go back to Uganda. And we want to just remember them in prayer. I'd like us, them to stand now. And Mama Singuzi, thank you again for bringing them to us. Please stand as we pray for you. I uh, just commission you um, into God's hands. But I'd like to ask the bishop to come, just to greet us so that you can hear his voice. Bishop, come. And just greet us. Salam Zakutoka, Uganda. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Now I want to pray. Um, the team from Uganda... Uh, so that is the privilege for us. We thank God for coming in the Baptist Church. We are very happy to see you. I remember. Uh, uh, I'm going to pray for our language. Mukama uh, Tukusima, Tuyo Tukusima habu mwanyo gugu wa Tereza. Tukwa atati mwejiru kuza Uganda. Yonjiru kujewe mbera. Yonjiru kutuwera. Umuribiona. Tukusima habu mwereza wawe. Kantu shaba ngor hamwana itue okututuwaro kwa gara kukatureta. Uhawe chitinisa. Yeso Kristo mkama waitu. Amen. Amen. Now stretch your hands as we pray for them, all of us, just release, bring them to the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to celebrate our beloved brothers and sisters from Uganda. And oh Lord, just for them to have a stop among us, we want to say thank you. Father, as they get ready to travel tomorrow to Israel, we want to speak a blessing for that journey, Jehovah God. That you are a God who watches over our going out and our coming in. My Father, watch over them. Thank you for Mama Singuzi and the team that has put them together for this travel. We pray that when they reach Israel, reveal to them what they need to see. Show them what they need to, to know. Let them hear, let them understand, and let them come back with a revelation that Jesus Christ is risen indeed. And so, Lord, we speak a blessing in their life, and we believe that, God, they will come back with a testimony. Father, we thank you for the Prince of Ancole. We thank you for Bishop, the Reverend, and the entire team. The Lord, you will favor them and surround them with your goodness and your mercy. Father, we say thank you. And, Lord, we know that for sure you have answered our prayer because we have prayed in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. And God's people say it. Amen. Amen. Come. All right. Mama wants to say something. Karibu. Come, come, come. Okay. Praise God, church. Thank you, Pastor Ambrose. I think you are the best pastor in Nairobi. <laughs> I want to thank this church so much for loving us, for accepting us, for the preparation, for the meals, 
May God bless you. I like Baptist Church. I don't know any other church in Nairobi. My sister now may stand up. I always come to visit her. She has been a blessing to her family, but whenever I come to this church. I think <laughs> Parkland Baptist Church is the best. God bless you so much. I love you so much, Pastor. Thank you for the service. God will bless you more. Thank you. Amen. Twasema asante, twasema asante, twasema asante, hewe mungu wangu. And mom, we say thank you to, to you. God bless you. Shall we stand as we read the word of God today? We are reading from the book of John, chapter 20. John 20. This scripture was read earlier as the worship team was singing. But let me read it for us today. The Bible says, early on the first day of the week. Let me ask you, when is the first day of the week? Sunday. So early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the, disciple went, then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, <clears throat> she bent over to look into the tomb. And saw two angels in white, seated with Jesus' body, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you had carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me. For I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I'm ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had, and she told them that he had said these things to her. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, 
He breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. This is God's word. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. We may be seated in God's house. I want you to know that Jesus is risen. Uh, I'm saying that Jesus is risen. Uh, I'm saying Jesus is risen. Uh, I'm saying Jesus is alive. Uh, I'm saying Jesus is alive. I'm not informing you. I'm saying that Jesus is alive. Uh, I'm saying that Jesus is seriously alive. Somebody better give God a big hand. Amen. For Mary Magdalene, this was the greatest news she had ever heard. For the disciple called Peter, it was bad news. Hello? For John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, it was such an assuring piece of news. But let me tell you this, for us, it must be life-changing news that Jesus is alive. Did you know that all the leaders of all the religions of the world are still in their graves? They lived a good life. They taught good things. But one thing they did not conquer is death. The Jesus we are talking about <clears throat> conquered death, died, was buried. But on the third day, he rose from the dead. Let me say this. Jesus is unstoppable. I am saying Jesus is unstoppable. Amen. Pastor Simon wrote that word in the, in the bulletin and he just put one word, unstoppable. That describes this day that this Jesus is unstoppable. And I want to share about this Jesus today. I don't want to talk to about the theology of the resurrection. But when somebody rises from the dead, they have risen from the dead. There is no theology around it. Hello? Jesus is alive. And I want to use the lives of these people, Mary Magdalene, Peter the disciple, John the disciple, but also talk a little bit about Mary and Martha in the situation they faced with Lazarus. Because Jesus was preparing them and preparing the world that there is life after death. Let me tell you this, death is not a full stop. Death is a comma. Hello? It is a comma. That sentence is still going on. This Jesus is alive. And because he's alive, let me tell you this, your life then makes sense. If Jesus is not alive, <clears throat> our life <clears throat> really doesn't make sense. Let me read what Paul said. I read this last week, but let me read it again. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let me read from verse 12, and then I'll pick it up with these other ones. The Bible says, but if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is our faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, 
then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You're still in your sins. Then, th then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But guess what? Christ has indeed been raised <clears throat> from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead has come through an angel. Hello? It has come through a man. And this man is Jesus Christ, and he's risen from the dead. Now, Jesus wanted to give a glimpse of this, because let me tell you this. One of the most challenging things that human beings face is a thing called death. And anytime somebody dies in your family, it's like everything comes to a standstill. And when you're mourning, and sometimes some people mourn for two, three weeks before they bury, those three weeks become very strenuous and very challenging in your life. You ask yourself so many questions and so many things, and you think your world has actually come to a stop. Mary and Martha experienced this, and Jesus wanted to give them a glimpse of what it means that death is not the end. There is a life bigger than the life you're talking about. I'm saying there is a life bigger than your biology life. So in John, there's a glimpse there. John chapter 11, the Bible says this. Let me read just a, some pieces here. The Bible says, now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters went, sent word to Jesus. If it was today, they sent him a text message. Hello? Sent him a WhatsApp. Huh? They sent him a text message and they said, Lord, the one you love is, is sick. Now listen to how Jesus responded. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister in Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was for how long? Can you imagine? How can Jesus do that? I mean, hey, your, 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 your friend Lazarus is sick, please Come quickly. Jesus decides, ah, he's busy doing other things. Two more days, and in those two days, it was critical. The Bible says in verse 7, and then he said to the disciples, let's go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews were trying to stone you, and yet you are going back. Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daylight will not stumble. Daytime will not stumble, for they for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. But guess what? I'm going there to wake him up. Death is not a full stop. I'm saying death is not a full stop. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I'm glad I was not there. So that you may believe. But let us go to him. I, I'm glad he said, let us go to him. He didn't say, let us go to his funeral. Hallelujah. Let us go to him. Let us go to him. Let's go wake him up. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, Ah, let us also go, that we may die with him. Can you imagine the way they were thinking? <laughs> uh, disciples, these disciples. Uh, verse 17, 
on his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for how many days? <coughs> for four days. Now, Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem. And many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, hey, I know. Now this is, this, she's in a theological state of mind. She says, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus gave her revelation. Jesus said to her, I am, I am, I am. That word I am is not saying the person you're looking at is. No, he's not saying that. He's saying what God spoke to Moses. And Moses said, who will I say sent me? And God says, tell them I am has sent you. Jesus is saying that I am who is and always is, is the resurrection and the life. This is not just a man. This is the I am. But this man, it is the I am in flesh. And he's saying, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live. The one who believes in me will live. The one who believes in me will live. Even though they die. Can you imagine that statement? Physically they will die. But spiritually, they are alive. And then he says in verse 26, And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? And Mary, Martha said, Yes, Lord. She replied, I believe that you are the Messiah. But that's not what Jesus was asking. Do you believe I'm the resurrection and the life? This is the story that now needed to replay itself in reality when Jesus rose from the dead. Because the disciples found it very difficult to believe that he had risen from the dead. And one of those people who really felt that challenge was Mary Magdalene. Now Mary Magdalene, you remember, Jesus had cast demons out of her. She had a mental problem caused by demons. And when Jesus cast out the demons, she really appreciated Jesus. She really loved Jesus. And when she saw Jesus die on the cross, she really felt it. And when Jesus was buried and they put spices on him and they put the frankincense and ma and all those things around him, she was there at the tomb with Mary, the mother of Jesus. These women really loved Jesus. And so early in the morning, she had gone so that they could continue to make sure that the body was in good shape. What she didn't expect was this man had risen from the dead. So John chapter 20 is our scripture there. Verse 1, it says this, John 21. <clears throat> Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. She did not go to see Jesus alive. She went to sort out the body. She saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon. By the way, she didn't even check. Hello? She just took off. Uh, she ran to Simon Peter. Now, Peter has a problem. Peter denied Jesus how many times? How many times? After saying what? After saying, <coughs> I will not deny you, Mimi. 
Yani you're looking at me as if I can deny. Mimi, I'm into you ndani ndani. I am your man. If you're looking at anybody, if you're looking at Judas Iscariot, uyo tunamjua. But look at me. Jesus said, you're going to deny me three times. And for sure, Peter denied Jesus three times. Then he sees Jesus being taken. He sees Jesus being beaten around. He sees Jesus being crucified. He sees Jesus dying on the cross. And Jesus is buried. Now, tell a man like that, that he just rose from the dead. Is that good news? I'm asking you, is that good news? <clears throat> One time I told people, the reason why people go for funerals, some people go for funerals to make sure that the person who they owed a lot of money is actually dead. So while they are passing at the casket and say, I'm a kofa. But imagine this guy, they owed Three days later, they hear that he rose, he was seen in Kawangwari. Can you imagine what this man will do? Do you think that is good news? No, that's the worst news that the person they had betrayed and denied is still alive. But you see, Jesus did not rise to come back and condemn Peter. He came to bring a lesson. Thomas, who was not there when Jesus revealed himself to the disciples, refused Kabisa and said, until I see him, I will not believe. Everybody around Jesus was not believing that he said he would rise from the dead. And I want you to know that Jesus is risen from the dead. Not so that you may have a theological statement, but so that you may know he's there for you. He's there for you. And he's there in a, at a new level. At a new level. And there are four things that I want to now summarize why Jesus rose from the dead. And why today you can walk around and say it is good news that Jesus is alive. Four statements I want to make here. Christ forever triumphant. And he is alive today. Number one, because Christ has been unveiled to us. What kind of Christ? Christ who is more than enough. Number two, Christ who has more than enough. Christ who does more than enough. And Christ who gives more than enough. Christ who is who is his reason. And he is more than enough. He has more than enough. He does more than enough. He gives more than enough. This was only possible if he had to rise from the dead. Let me start with the first one very quickly. and Let us know that Jesus Christ is more than enough. Is more than enough. Is more than enough. I'm saying he's more than enough. You see, when Mary suddenly saw Jesus and thought she was a gardener, Mary says, please, if you're the one who has taken him, show me where you've placed him so that I may continue to take care of this dead situation. Maybe you're going through a situation and it is a dead situation and you want to continue holding on to it for a long time. You don't want to let go the dead situation. And Mary says to Jesus, show me where you have laid him that I may continue to look at the dead thing. Then Jesus, the resurrected one, who is more than enough, called her by a name and the way he said it was important. You know, sometimes the way you say something is important. Now imagine Jesus had turned to her and said, Mary! She would have fainted and taken off. But Jesus called her in a very familiar way and said, Mary. And she recognized that voice. She knew it was the voice of somebody she knew who had, 
who was alive. But now she could not believe it that this same voice is alive. And that's why she turned around. And what some people don't tell us <clears throat> is what happened when she turned around. Now, if you see somebody who is, whom you have been longing to see and suddenly they call your name, you turn and you recognize them, what do you do? Huh? She ran to Jesus and held on to him as if Jesus would, was about to take off. And she was saying, Jesus, Sikwachi, I am not letting go. And Jesus told her, Mary, I'm not the same person you saw me the other day. I'm the resurrected one. And he said, Mary, I'm going to heaven. Now, what, what time was this when Jesus is talking to Mary? What time? Talk to me. Was it in the morning or the evening? Was early in the morning. So Jesus tells her, listen, I have not yet gone where? To my father. But he says something that is amazing. Who is your father? Something had changed. Jesus had never talked like that to people. Jesus just used to say, God is my father, my father, my father. Now he turns around and says, this father <coughs> is your father. This God is your God. My God, your God, my Father, your Father. A new relationship has happened. A new identity is being given to you. Jesus was no longer Jesus of Nazareth. He was now Jesus, the Son of the living God. And she said, Mary, let me go. Because I want to go to heaven and include you in the birth certificate, the Huduma number in heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to make you identical to who I am so that my father becoming your father, my God becoming your God, you shall receive eternal life. Mary was about to experience something that was going to be life-changing. And by the way, Jesus actually went to heaven that morning. He went to the Father straight. In the evening, he came. He came back. Hello? I said he went to heaven that morning. Bing! And he came back in the evening when the other disciples were still having a very difficult time with him. But I'm giving that point that this Christ is more than enough. This Christ we deal with, he's no longer on the cross. That's why our cross is empty. He's alive. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, chapter 5. let me read verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. It says, For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. Verse 15. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was what? Was raised again. Look at verse 16. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. He is no longer that man who walked the streets of Galilee. This one is from heaven. This one is seated at the right hand of God, the Father. This one has all authority and all power and all majesty. This one will never die. He lives forever. He lives forever. He lives forever. And guess what? He has given you a new identity. The Bible says in verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. 
the new is here. Jesus Christ rose from the dead to give you a new identity. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I'm not who you think I am. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your neighbor is saying, we came with you to church. What do you mean by that? <laughs> but in Christ, we don't look at each other the way we used to look at each other. Because in Christ, we are a new creation. And that is why in Christ, there is no luya. There is no kikuyu. There is no luo. There is no tribe. Because in Christ, we are a new creation. A brand new person. So new, it will amaze you. This is who you are. Do not let the devil lie to you. The devil is a liar. Jesus rose from the dead to transform you. Jesus rose from the dead to turn Mary Magdalene from just a woman who was free from demons to a woman who was connected to the Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. You're a new creation. Jesus is the one who is more than enough. Hallelujah. More than enough. More than enough. He is the I am. He is the El Shaddai. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is more than enough. Very quickly, the second one. He has more than enough. God is connecting you to unlimited resources. That is why Jesus rose from the dead to connect you to unlimited resources. Hallelujah. During this time when Jesus had risen from the dead, the disciples kept seeing him coming and going, coming and going, coming and going. Let me read for you what they did in John 21. John 21, the Bible says, afterward, tell your neighbor afterward. Now you may be wondering afterward what, was, what had just happened. You see, Jesus had already breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee, and it happened this way. Simon Peter, the one who did not want Jesus to rise from the dead, he says, Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathanael from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. And verse 3 says, they were together, and Simon told them, hey, you guys, I'm going out fishing. And by the way, they had left fishing a long time ago. But now because Jesus keeps coming and disappearing, coming and disappearing, they said, let, let us mind our own business. Let's, let's do what we do best. Ladies and gentlemen, this month of April, don't do what you do best. Do what Christ enables you to do. Because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. This one who rose from the dead is not just more than enough. He has more than enough. This is the lesson he wanted to teach the disciples. Simon said, I'm going out fishing. He told them, and they said, we'll go with you. By the way, this, this tells you that some people are very powerful. There are people in your life who tell you to do anything, and before they think they will, do it. You are a person of influence. So look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I'm a man, a woman of influence. There are some things, for example, myself, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a very influential person. Because there are some things I can tell you to do without questioning you'll do. True? True? There are some of you, though, will question and say, but Ambrose is just like us. We cannot just do what he's telling us to do. And that is a, a person who, is, who has learned to think for themselves. Hello? But I'm happy that there are some people who can do things without thinking when I tell them. <laughs> but I always tell myself, my influence is not for me, my influence is for the kingdom. And I always pray, oh God, may I not tell people in Parklands things you have not said. Because I know they will still do it. 
And one day when I get to heaven, Jesus will tell me, why were you lying to people like that? I don't want that to happen. Peter was very influential. So when he told the people, let's go fishing, they also said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night, tell your neighbor, but that night, they caught nothing. Tell them, they caught nothing. Tell your neighbor, without Jesus, you will catch nothing. Except water. Just tell them. <laughs> you know, some of us think that we can live without Jesus. Ah, me, me, I can do without him. Huh? Me, I can do without him. There are people here who say, I can do without the church. Well, what do I need the church for? Let me tell you this. The day you die, you will look for us. <clears throat> no, your, your family will look for us. You will not be there that time. <laughs> And we'll come there to bury you. You will need us at that time. But let me tell you this. More than you need the church, you need Jesus. You need Jesus. And this guy caught nothing. Hmm? The Bible says, let me pick it up. Early in the, mo in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends. Now imagine he's calling them friends. These were his disciples. He says, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, by the way, throw your net. On the right side, you have been throwing it on the wrong side. Throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, thank God they obeyed. They were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Verse 7. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved, this is John, said to Peter, Guess what? It is the Lord, the risen Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. Only Peter can do this. The other disciples followed him in the boat. Him, he swam to the shore. Again, to make sure. Is this Jesus? The other disciples followed him in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. In other words, what had Jesus been doing there in the morning? He was making breakfast. You know, some people think that Jesus is so spiritual that he doesn't care about things like breakfast, lunch. You know, they think, and some of you f deal with Jesus like that. You only look for spiritual things. Heavenly Father, today we come for revelations from heaven. Oh, revelations, oh Jehovah God. Do not show us human beings, show us angels. Oh, Michael and Gabriel. Michael Namwangi. Father, we pray. You think that Jesus rose from the dead so that now he could wait for you to go to heaven? Ah, uh ah. -uh. Jesus is alive so that he can walk with you. He can talk with you. He can handle your condemnation because Peter was feeling very guilty. And Jesus was giving him a chance to say sorry, but Peter was not saying sorry. So Jesus decided, Allah, these people need breakfast. You know, do you know that food can break a lot of situations in people's lives? That is why in Parklands we believe that we should take tea. Because when people are taking tea, they just share. Hallelujah. Jesus was making breakfast for these people. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. But he himself is the one who had caught fish before they showed up. And I think, Pastor Simon, Jesus had been there the whole night when they were struggling. And he was just checking them out. You know, he's sitting there and he's seeing them struggle. He's saying, these people, they don't trust me. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, sometimes you struggle through life, even this weekend, you've been struggling because the money that you, you, you got for salary got finished last week, and you do not know how the month is going to sort your hello. Just look at your neighbor. They, they, they may be looking very innocent, but I'm telling you, 
they have been going through issues. <laughs> but let me tell you this. Jesus, who is alive, has seen you through the struggle. And he did something. He said, these guys, when, by the time they come back, they'll be so tired, so hungry, you cannot even talk to them. So they need breakfast. So they put together, he put together breakfast. He said, bring some of that to you. Look at verse 11. By the way, this is also interesting. Pastor Simon, this is interesting because your name is there. So it says there. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of small fish. Large fish. How many? 153. How do, how, 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 how do we know it is 153? What did they do? Huh? They counted. They counted them. Now, now, there are people who come from a place in this country where they eat some small fish called omena. Omena are very tiny things that when you eat them, they look at you. Well, as you are eating them, they are looking at you. But you cannot count them. There are too many. So with the, us, we didn't, whenever I used to eat them one by one, you just grab a whole, of, a whole lot, put them in your mouth. These were large fish. In other words, so large, no wonder they could not pull them out. 153 of them. I don't know why they're 153. I don't have that revelation. Please don't come back to me and say, Ambrose, what is the spiritual revelation <laughs> of, the, of, the, of the number 153? I don't have it. The only thing I know it can be divided by, you can divide that number by what? By three. After that, there is no division. So that I don't have a revelation. There's no revelation. So look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, 153 does not mean anything. It just means they counted. Hallelujah. But listen to the next verse. The next verse says this. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? Can you imagine? They knew it was who? It was the Lord. Look at the next verse. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. He served them. You know, Jesus is alive because he wants to serve you. I'm saying Jesus is alive because he wants to serve you. He's telling you, I have more than enough. You may have had nothing. You may be struggling this whole week. Your salary went and disappeared a long time ago. But Jesus says, the person you're dealing with who is alive has more than enough. He has more than enough. And he's willing to give you more than enough. He has more than enough. What does he have? He has love that surpasses knowledge. He has peace that surpasses your understanding. He has joy unspeakable and full of glory. He has life that will cause you to live eternally forever and ever and ever and ever. He has more than enough. And I'm telling you, you can share and share, but it will keep coming and coming and coming because this Jesus is alive. He has more than enough. Why do we know that? Because God lifted him up and raised him up and made him to sit in the heavenly places. Let me read that verse and then I'll begin to summarize this message. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. The Bible says this very quickly. And this is the lesson Jesus wanted to show these people. It says, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. The Bible says in verse 6, who being in very nature, who? God. Did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord 
to the glory of God the Father. This man, this Christ, has more than enough. And you can trust him. You can depend on him. He will provide for you. But thirdly, Christ does more than enough. Tell your neighbor, Christ does more than enough. This Christ is unstoppable. He will do more than enough. And the reason why he will do more than enough is because he wants you to be connected to his victory daily. Let me read 2 Corinthians 2.14. He has conquered. He does more than enough. So listen to the Bible. He says this in 2 Corinthians 2.14. But thanks be to God who always leads us captives in Christ's triumphal procession and uses us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of him everywhere. Let me read that in the Amplified Version. 2 Corinthians 2.14. The Bible says this, but thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. Always. He always does that. He has given us victory on a daily basis. He says, and through us, spreads and makes evident everywhere the sweet fragrance of the knowledge of him. Amen? You have victory every day. Look at this verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 4. Let me start with verse 55. The Bible says this in verse 55. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that, verse 58 says, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. He rose from the dead to give you victory. You are more than a conqueror. Now, one of the things that people do, and I know some of you do, and you're in this church, and it's not to make you guilty. Some of you are connected to Bettine. Hello? Now, don't look at me like that. You are a gambler. You gamble money. You're always betting. You're on this phone. The young people we are told today spend these 20 shillings every day betting. And you know, betting sometimes can be very challenging because betting, you'll bet, and guess what? You will win. Hello? Now, if you win, if you put in 20 shillings, and then you win 5,000, this is how your brain thinks. Out of 5,000, I have many 20 shillings that I can now bet back in. So let's say you now bet back in. And then you win 10,000. What will make you, how, how will you start thinking? I can win again. And then you win, and then you tell yourself, I can win again. And then you decide, Allah, me, I'm going for the jackpot. Do you watch any of these things or small, small things? You go borrow this, this and that, and you take people's money, and then you put in a lot of money. Guess what? You lose everything. But you tell yourself, ah, that was just a, that, that, that was just a one-off. I will try again. And this betting goes jing jang, jing jang, jing jang, 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 Now, let me, what you don't know is that one day you will not ever go up. You will go jing, 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 and nobody is bringing you back up. Let me tell you one gamble you need to make. This is the best gamble. Gamble on the risen Savior. Jesus Christ. And let me tell you this. Come on, give God a big hand.
Gamble on Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. And let me tell you this. You will have victory again and again and again and again. Now, that doesn't mean you will not have problems. It means you still have problems, but with every problem, you win. You win. You're more than a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror. Now somebody is saying, while they are listening to me, he says, Ambrose, is gambling wrong? That's not the point I was trying to bring to you. The point I was trying to bring to you is this. Gamble on Jesus. The Bible says, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Gamble on Jesus. So let me show you this verse and then we shall pray. It says this, Romans chapter 8. This is a man who gambled his whole life on Christ. This is what he says in Romans chapter 8, starting with verse 28. This is what he said. He said something interesting. He says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Now, verse 31. Just go to 31. This is a verse that I want you to remember. It says, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Now, fast forward that to verse 35. In verse 35, it gives some challenges that we face. It says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble? No. Hardships? No. Persecution? No. Famine? No. Nakedness? No. Danger? Sword? Look at the next verse. As it is written, for your sake... We face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Then it says in verse 37, No, not at all. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through him who did what? Who loved us. Then it paints another picture, verse 38. It says, for I am convinced. You know, that's why Jesus rose from the dead. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You are victorious. I'm saying you're victorious. Put your gamble on Jesus Christ. You will win all the time. All the time. Yes, you'll go through challenges, but the challenges will make you better. There will be tragedies, but the tragedies will make you stronger. Because in Christ, you are more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. This Jesus is alive. This Jesus is alive. He is more than enough. He has more than enough. He will do for you more than enough. And because of that, he will give you more than enough. I want us to stand up as we prepare to pray. Because this Jesus will give you more than enough. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, Jesus is unstoppable. And because he's in me. Yeah, tell them. And because he is in me. I am unstoppable. Because he lives. I live. Because he's risen. I'm risen. Because he sits at the right hand of God the Father. I'm also sitting at the right hand of God the Father. All he has is mine. All he is, I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new person. 
I may be going through problems. But I'm a winner. I'm a winner in here. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm bigger than you think. Hallelujah. I'm alive. In Jesus name. I'm not poor. I'm rich. I'm not weak. I'm strong. I'm not sick. I'm healthy. In Christ. I am everything he is. Today, I walk in his power. Today, I receive his provision. Today, I think like he thinks. I walk the way he walks. I live the way he wants me to live. Because he is victorious. I am victorious. I thought I had nothing. But now because of Christ. I have everything. I'm wealthy. In Jesus name. And one day. When Jesus comes. I will be raptured with him. In Jesus' name. name. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the good news of this Sunday. Come on, let's give God a big hand and bless him. Let's bless him. The Bible says in Ephesians, as I I prepare to pray, it says this in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Ephesians 1 3. It's a good verse. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. And so I decree and declare to you that you are blessed. May this Easter be your turning point for Jesus is alive. I'm saying this Easter is your turning point. I'm saying this, this Easter your turning point. You're going to rise from the grave. Those dead things, you will shed them and God will give you new life things. God is about to turn your life around. And even as we pray, again we want to remember brothers who are going to Israel. They are going to reach a place where Jesus was buried. They will find he's not there. Hallelujah. He's risen. He's risen. And because he's risen, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Amen? I don't know what cave you're in. I don't know what dungeon you're in. But I'm saying may the light of the resurrection shine in that darkness. In Jesus' name. May the Lord comfort you. If you're going through a difficult time, of somebody in the family who is passed on, let me tell you this, may the light of God's favor and mercy reach into that place. May God reach out to you today. If you're broke, let me tell you this, it is okay to be broke. Hello? Better be broke in your pocket, but wealth in your heart. But somebody saying, the riches of the heart do not pay rent. (laughs) Hello? But let me tell you this. May the Lord serve you breakfast. I'm saying may the Lord serve you breakfast. May the Lord come to those simple needs of life and touch you. Reach out to you. He cares about those things. What I never read for you is what Jesus started asking Peter when he was taking breakfast. In fact, he had taken quite a number of fish and he had eaten quite a number of them. And then Jesus said, slow down. He said, Peter... Son of John, do you love me more than the fish you have just eaten? And Peter said, Lord, I love you. And then Jesus said, feed my sheep. He says, Peter, I have not given up on you. Keep doing what I sent you to do. Let me tell you this. Jesus has not given up on you. He's saying, 
keep feeding my sheep. Keep doing the right thing. Keep living the, the, the good life. And Jesus will help you. Jesus forgives and forgets. I know some of your friends have forgiven you, but they don't forget. They keep reminding you where you remember. But Jesus forgave you. That's the joy of the resurrection. So if you believe that, you better say, I receive it. I receive God's blessings. I receive God's favor. I receive God's new life. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this morning, this afternoon. Thank you for your word because many people came today that they may receive the word this Easter Sunday. And dear Lord, we believe that this Easter Sunday is a time of a new life, a new resurrection life. And Father, today I want to pray for each one of us and not just to pray, but to say, Lord, may we know that the Christ who is in our midst is the Christ who is more than enough, who has more than enough, who does more than enough, and who gives more than enough. May we go with that revelation. May we go with the revelation that Mary Magdalene suddenly found out when Jesus, you said, Mary, when you called her name, something changed. May you call our name because you know us and you want to give us a new beginning from a new level. So, Father, we love you. We appreciate you during this holiday season. There are some people who have traveled in. There are some people who traveled out. And we pray for journey masses for those who will be traveling here and there. But Lord, may we walk with the revelation this week that Christ is risen. No matter what problem comes our way, may we remember he's risen. He's risen. And he knows what is happening. He's risen. And he's in charge. And he's in control. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Dear Lord, I pray for somebody here who feels so depressed. But this afternoon, light has entered into their depression. They are beginning to see hope again. They are beginning to see life coming back to them. And dear Father, in the name of Jesus, I say, may they rise from their deadness. May they come back to life. Lord, there are those watching us online. And Lord, I don't know what they are going through, but God, you know. Reach them. Meet them at their point of need. And dear Lord, may we walk out of this place with joy. Just like the disciples, when they saw you, they were filled with joy. Yes, they had doubted, but they were filled with joy. That the one who had died was now alive, and not just alive, forever victorious in their midst. So, Father, we thank you, and we bless you. Because we have prayed in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And God's people say it. Now, why don't we give God a big hand and just tell him thank you. <laughs> give him a big hand like somebody who is actually alive. He's alive. Come on, come on, come on, come on, somebody. Let's tell him he's alive. He's risen. Come on. He's risen.
Are you glad you came today? Why don't you give God another big hand? As I pray the benediction and bless you today, please, we want to get in touch with you. We have connect cards. Tell your neighbor, connect cards. I believe we have connect cards in the baskets. Okay, the cross, there's that cross, there's that cross, there's that cross. We want to get in touch with you. The pastor would like to get in touch with you. Pick one of those cards, fill it in, whatever the need is, get it to us so that we can pray with you. Some of the pastors will be here after I have finished preaching. And if you, have, you need prayer and you need to give your life to Jesus, they are here to pray with you. And I want you to know that your life will never be the same again. Hallelujah. But pick one of those connect cards and connect with us. We are glad you came. Have a fantastic Easter Sunday. And is tomorrow a holiday? Yes. Oh, okay. And may you have a good holiday tomorrow. And may you have an, an amazing week this week. And no matter what you go through, remember, you are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. Amen. Lift up your hand as I bless us. Our visitors, please welcome for a cup of tea today. Father, I lift up my hand to your people. And as they lift up their hands, O oh Jehovah God, may this blessing reach out to them. Those of you in the pavilion, those of you in the sanctuary, in the parents' room, wherever you may be online, may this blessing reach out to you now. And now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord release favor in your life. And may that same Lord who met, who met Mary Magdalene in her time of despair and called her name Mary, may that Lord call your name this week. May that one tell you, I'm here for you. May the blessings of Jehovah accompany you every day this coming week. May the month of April be a month full of victories because the Lord who is risen is victorious every day. And may you go from one degree of glory to another. Your family is blessed. Your children are blessed. You're blessed in the city and you're blessed in the countryside. You're blessed locally and you're blessed internationally. You're blessed your Monday is blessed. Your Tuesday is blessed. Your Wednesday is blessed. Your Thursday is blessed. Your Friday is blessed. Your Saturday is blessed. And Sunday you're coming back with a testimony. You're blessed. Come on, let's give God a big hand. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed by Christ who is more than enough who has more than enough, who does more than enough, who gives more than enough. In the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And God's people say, Amen. amen. And amen. And amen. And amen. Look at your neighbor, and tell your neighbor, surely goodness, and mercy, shall follow you, all the days of your life and you shall dwell in God's favor in God's goodness every day and there's nothing the devil can do about it you are blessed to be a blessing you are favored to be favorable you are lifted to lift others in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Bishop and the team, God bless you. Mom, God bless you. We are glad you came. 
And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Shalom.